And we welcome you to Wall 2018, the WAL Chicago 401. And a great set of matches here. New format this year with a total purse at the end of it after six contests. We'll have five regionals and a championship in Atlanta. $250,000 on the line here over the next few months here in WAL. And it all begins here tonight in Chicago. Rob Vigent, he's on display tonight. Looking forward to seeing him go. Nicholas Nanestad from Sweden's here as well. He is a beast to go against. You've also got Ian Carnegie here as well. Speaking of beast, he's a tough man to take down, a very powerful man. Tom Nelson, the real deal, he's here as well. Looking forward to seeing him go at it here tonight. You've also got Quinlan Mendez, who will start things off here in this six-match competition tonight. He'll go against Justin Bishop, the Bama Bull. Had great success in the WAL. Both men have. That should be a terrific match. Also on the card here tonight, the women are on display. Tamara Mitz also going head-to-head -head here. She'll go against Swedes' Erica Bengston here tonight. Looking forward to that match as well. And the living legend, Andrew Cobra Rhodes. He'll be on display here tonight against Max Taubin. Should be a great match there. And then to close things out, Nick Zinna, heavyweight, set to go against another fellow heavyweight. And this should be a dynamite match. Michael the Monster Todd, he's here tonight in Chicago to get things going here in Chicago 401 for the WAL here in 2018. Great crowd on hand here tonight at Joe's Live in Rosemont, Illinois, just across the street from O'Hare Airport. And we're thrilled to be here with you. Thrilled to have the WAL on BR Live. First time an event's been streamed internationally on BR Live tonight. We also say thanks to Turner for their help as well. It is the Supermatch Showdown Series 401, season four of the WAL, event number one of the WAL. And we are looking forward to getting going here tonight. Great to see you and be back with you. Matt Craig is with me. Matt's competed many years in professional arm wrestling. My name is Ben Holden. Jason Fisher's with us as well. He's our pit reporter. What are you expecting here tonight, Matt? I am expecting some absolute wars tonight, especially with our two ladies, Tamara Mitz and Erica Bigstrom. They have had some absolute wars in the past, have come out dead even after incredibly long matches. When they lock up, no one is going to want to go down easy. There will be a ton of emotion, a ton of knowledge, a ton of history between those two. We are also going to have some absolute explosiveness with Justin Bishop, Nick Zena, Tom Nelson, all three are extremely explosive, capable of finishing a match in under one second, literally. So this is going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to be exciting either way, and I cannot wait to get this started. Yeah, we're going to get things going with Quinlan Mendez and Justin Bishop, and we're going to take a look at the entire card here for our matches tonight. Mendez and Bishop will start things off. Andrew Rhodes will go against Max Taubin in our second match. Ian Carnegie against Tom Nelson in match number three. The women's match featuring who Matt just talked about, Erica Bengston and Tamara Mitz, and then Rob Vigent Jr. and Nicholas Nanista. That should be a fun one. Michael Todd and Nick Zinna, they will close things out here tonight. So that is our match card here tonight at Joe's Live in Rosemont, Illinois for WAL Chicago 401 here tonight. And let's go to Matt now, who's at the table for some rules and some demonstration. Okay, in the spirit of our super match series here, these are all going to be five round bouts. You must win three matches in order to win. Now, basic rules. We are going to do a standard WAL setup. Hands will go together. Bart Wood, will our referee, will line up our webbings. You will have 30 seconds to line your webbings up. If you are not able to do that, we will go directly into the straps. Okay. Before the start of the match, elbow must be on the pad. Opposing hand must be on the peg. One foot must be on the floor. The match will start when Bart Wood says go. This is a running foul system. What that means is if a person commits a foul, an elbow foul, hand comes off the peg, foul of any sort, the match does not stop. The offending person must get a win in order to restart the match. If they lose, it is simply a loss. If your opponent fouls, 
and you beat them, it is just a win. The match does not restart. But under no circumstances does a match stop due to a foul. Okay, we are ready to get this thing started, ready to get it rolling. Got our people behind us. Let's go. Thanks so much, Matt. Great explanation. The fans are fired up here for Chicago. 401. Let's take a closer look now, a personal side look at Quinlan Mendez. Quinlan Mendez with the WAL, hailing out of Sherwood, Ohio. Team Titan Arms, baby. Getting ready to put in some hard, hard work right here. But you know, you're getting the same equal workout out of the job. Both your hands are going to be solid. This is what really makes or breaks the guys in this factory. You know, like I said, I've seen a couple hundred people walk out the door because it's so physical and hard. We do what we got to do to keep our family afloat. This is my lovely wife, Britt. I have four beautiful children. So trying to get my lifting time in, trying to juggle his practices and her dances. My job, working 12 hours a day, you know, trying to get at least 50 some hours in a week. It's rough. I ain't got a lot of money, so when we go to competitions, that's like our vacation. We're a big family. This is my father, Dave Mendez. He's one hell of a guy. I love him to death for everything he's done for me. It's not what you're doing that makes you stronger what your attitude is. Be physical, hit hard, don't let these guys push you around. It's a long, long, hard road, but you gotta do what you gotta do to be on top. He's, he's yeah, ready to kick some ass. Quinlan, personally, is probably the greatest person you'll ever meet. He will give you the shirt off his back, but yet he's like a Jekyll and Hyde. You get him arm wrestling, and it's like two different people. In my opinion, I think he's gonna be one of the best in the world. So a closer look at Quinlan Mendez. He's a great human being, a young man that's dealing with the loss of his brother a few weeks ago, a tragic loss, and you know he'll be thinking of him tonight. What do you think of him and his style in this match against Justin Bishop? Quinlan Mendez is an absolute workhorse. Heart of a lion never gives up. He does like to get into a hook, and once he get into, gets into that hook, he is very hard to move. We can expect an absolute war if he gets down into that hook and he never gives up. He does not have to be in the hook. He can be in a bad position and never gives up. He can be a quarter inch from the pad. He will never, ever give up. So if Quinlan gets into that position, expect a war. He's a very, very determined young man indeed. On the other side, Justin Bishop, known as the Bama Bull, of course, wears the Bear Bryant hat, a tribute to Bear Bryant, huge Alabama football fan. In fact, we ran into each other today talking about that, and his style is somewhat similar to the way Alabama plays football, isn't it? Absolute pure dynamite. Justin Bishop is a top roller. When he hits, he is looking to end a match very, very quickly. He can end this match in less than a second without any trouble. On the other hand, he is very comfortable also being in a war. If he gets in a bad position with Quinlan, or if he gets what he wants and can hold it, you can expect him to go for the bleed just as quickly. Either way, it's gonna be very explosive when these two go against each other, very exciting, and I can't wait. Well, we're looking forward to it. That'll be our first match of the night, first of six here from Joe's Live here in Rosemont, Illinois. We're here on BR Live here tonight, thrilled for that. And let's now go to our public address announcer, Nick Hausman, for the introductions. Are we ready? Let's get this started. Our first match is a best of five middleweight battle competing out of Alexander City, Alabama. He consistently lands as a top finisher at WAL events. He's six foot tall, 192 pounds. Bama Bull, Justin Bishop. Able by myself after these. And his challenger at five foot nine and 201 pounds, he competes 
out of Bryan, Ohio, is the 2017 WAL Midwest Classic middleweight champion and one of the hardest working men in arm wrestling. He is Quinlan Mendez! contrast in styles but it's going to be a straight all-out war either way they're going it's going to be power so Bart Wood the veteran referee in his 25th year of officiating arm wrestling he is hey, the lead referee here in the WAL let's listen hey, in to Bart Wood best of five I'm gonna set you up square your shoulders set your elbows on the table open up open up square up Square, take this run. Yep, straight, straight. Close your thumbs. Stay there, do not cover this, it will be a foul, Quinlan. Do not cover. I gotta see thumb knuckle on both of you. Set it down, Quinlan, set your elbow down. Right there. Jockeying already beginning. You both are gonna cover. These men are going to fight for every single advantage with those hands. Yep, so Bart Wood sends both, him back. You both are going to have to lower your level a little bit. Both have to come down a little bit. And once again, we are running a 30-second clock. If they cannot get their webbings lined up and get what they want in 30 seconds, we go directly to the strap. Yes, indeed. Right in between each Stay pull, down. there will have 90 seconds right there. Close your hand. to be ready and in position. Go. We'll see if they go this time. And into the strap we go. Yes, we do. Right there away to the straps for Mendez. Yeah, and Bishop. Covered, so I couldn't see yours either. Okay, down this, down, Quinn. Does this down, give either down, one Quinn. of these guys right an advantage? And if so, who does it get? Who gets the advantage in the straps here in your mind, Matt? If anyone gets the advantage in the straps, in there, it's probably going to be Justin, but I don't think there's a huge advantage for either one. I think both of them wanted to go to the straps. Okay. So Bart Wood. Quinlan, and if they pan down, do you, you can see Quinlan Mendez actually puts his foot on the other side of the table, on Justin Bishop's, his, Justin Bishop's side of the table. His left foot. His left foot yeah. goes up on the table leg. That is completely legal, 100% legal. So the straps are applied. I will. Jen Wood, her fourth year of officiating, helping out Bart Wood. And Bart right Wood tightens it up, and we're just about Justin set to go in our first pull here in Chicago. Right there will be there, no more gentlemen. slipping. The strap does not lie. Go. And Justin Bishop takes hand control, but Quinlan Mendez does not give up. And Justin Bishop with the push of the surge and the pin. That didn't take him long. A one nothing lead in this match. That was exactly what Justin Bishop wanted to do. Take that hand top roll and roll Quinlan over. He did just that. And that is going to give a ton of confidence to the Bama Bull. So Mendez back to his corner and again 90 seconds to get set is what they have under the rules this year. Five regionals this year, 35 competitors. First event here tonight of course in Chicago in a month. In Bishop Baltimore, one then Cleveland, Norfolk, and then Los Angeles with the championships and the final being held in Atlanta in early September. And this is something new and unique to the WAL. We are actually having corners where these men can go and get advice, get their arms rubbed out, figure out what they did wrong. In Quinlan Mendez's corner, we have Tom Nelson, very yeah. experienced puller and coach. And in Justin Bishop's corner, an absolute legend in Tony Katowski, giving him advice on the next match. The new format. Outstanding crowd. Yeah, good crowd here at Joe's Live in Rosemont. The new format, many of the fans wanted it. It was based on rankings, style of the competitors, and the WAL selection committee. So 35 seconds now on the clock in between pulls here. 
And these two Warriors don't want to wait. They're back up to the table and ready to go. I like that approach. How about you? I, I love it. I love it. These, both of these men have hearts of a lion. Both are very blue collar, workhorse men, family men, wonderful men, and absolute warriors. Quinlan Mendez makes tires for a living. Justin Bishop, a contractor and carpenter down in Alabama. As I mentioned, a huge Alabama football fan. Well, they need straps, and they will oh, again. Oh, absolutely. They're yeah. going into the straps. Yep. <laughs> yep. So a one nothing lead for the Bama Bowl. Justin Bishop here on Quinlan Mendez. It's a best of five. So the math is easy. Three to win the match. And Quinlan is not looking to get his hand taken again. You can expect him to dive deep into that hook very quickly, try and stop Bama Bulls' hit and see if he can turn this thing around. Justin Bishop was a guy that really made his name a few years back by top rolling Giannis Amelins. Giannis was tops in the world then, still one of the best in the world. Yes, that was an amazing match. I've seen that many times. And Giannis did actually come back and get him in that tournament, but Justin Bishop pulled off the unthinkable in front of everybody in the world by beating Giannis Amelins. So here we go in the straps. And Justin takes the hand again. Quinlan has pulled up into the press. He's stopping the drive. But there goes Justin Bishop with a big drive and the pin. And a 2-0 lead. Outstanding. Bishop needing one more to win this match. Trying to get the crowd fired up is the Bama Bull. And you see Bartwood like an umpire. Two, that's two. That is two. However, <laughs> I would not count Quinlan Mendez out yet. This is not over. Once again, Quinlan Mendez has the absolute heart of a lion and the horsepower to win this. He's proved time and time again in his career he can draw from his own well of determination. He's got a reserve that most don't, to your point, Matt. So when you're in this position, down two nothing. I mean, what what's the mindset now for for Quinlan Men Mendez? Clint Eastwood said it best when he said, "When you're down and it looks bleak, you have to get mean, plain mad dog mean." And okay. I think that's what Quinlan's about to do. All right, he's about to pull every reserve out he has and go full tilt. He's got the power and the raw horsepower to do it, but so does that young man, Justin Bishop. The Bama Bull. And look at that look. Yeah. Justin Bishop looks, he looks intense. Very confident look on his face. Quinlan Mendez has to win this pull to keep the match alive. 2 0 lead for Bishop in the best of five. Seconds ticking away until they have to be in position. Here we go. Bend to the straps and each of the first two pulls here. And I would be willing to bet we're going right back into the straps again. You took the words right out of my mouth, Matt. And there we go. Yep. Nice call by you. So Bart Wood for the third time in this match. Both of these men, that's exactly where they want to be is in those straps. Yep. Justin Bishop. Okay, there's a loose hand. Get it nice and tight. Okay, just get that equal. Stay right there. Six matches on the docket here tonight. Okay, what am I doing? This one the first. The second one to follow will be Andrew Cobra Rhodes and Max Taubin. But first things first here to the straps. What are you anticipating here, Matt? I am anticipating, once again, Quinlan Mendez to dive into that hook very hard, try and stop that top roll, prevent Justin Bishop from taking his hand. Once again, Justin has one of the strongest hands in the business. Quinlan is going to have to beat his arm to win this match. He's not going to beat Justin Bishop's hand. There we go. Okay, square up. Straps applied. Turn around. Yeah, I'll get you. Turn this Justin around. Bishop, he wins the pull, he wins the match. 
And Justin has taken the hand, and look at that face. He's confident he can hold. He does not need to be in a hurry here. But Quinlan has taken his hand back. There's that power. There is that power, that heart. Big drive. Justin Bishop is your winner, three to nothing. Takes the first match. And Justin straight. came through with heart and horsepower. The Bama Bull. Celebrate Justin Bishop, you have earned it. He definitely earned it. He wins the match, three to nothing. And let's get down now to the pit. Jason wow. Fisher, Justin who's Bishop, always in the, the zone. Bama Bull, you always pull with such confidence, but it looked like a whole nother level. Where does that come from? Uh, training, man. If you know you're putting it in in the gym and on the table, you know it'll show up on game day. Quinlan is such an incredible puller. How important was it winning that first round and getting a start like you did to finish him off here? Uh, knowing, knowing a person like Quinlan, they got a strong will, strong heart to, to uh, win. It's very important. You don't want to get behind the, you don't want to get behind on the card when you pull a guy like him. It's like two different people. The Bama Bull and Justin Bishop. Amazing job. Congratulations, Justin. Boom. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate that. And down there with the victorious Justin Bishop as we look back at some of the key moments here, Matt. Well, immediately, what you'll see immediately is Justin Bishop went straight into the top roll. Justin Bishop went straight into the top roll, took Quinlan Mendez's hand, and from there it was a simple act of rolling him over. Once he has that hand and had Quinlan's hand bent back, there was very little Quinlan was going to be able to do if he could not get his hand back against Justin Bishop. All right, are you in any way surprised at the way that match went? Actually, I am. I are honestly you? thought Quinlan was going to take this one. I thought Justin was questioned his own right hand a few times, but obviously, needlessly. But I thought Quinlan was going to have the weight, the muscle, and the horsepower to pull this one off. But Justin Bishop just proved me very wrong. He took Quinlan's hand and took him over dominantly. And that was a very, very impressive victory for Justin Bishop. Yes, the Bama Bull coming out victorious in our first match of the night here in WAL Chicago 401. Justin Bishop, the winner in match number one, coming up in our second match. The living legend, Andrew Cobra Rhodes, will take on Max Taubin here in Chicago. Check 
one, two, one, two. You wanna beef with the king? What is you gonna do? When you show up on the scene, one two guns. And we are back here at Joe's Live, Rosemont, Illinois, WAL Chicago 401. First match of the night is complete. Justin Bishop, we heard from him. Let's go back to Jason Fisher now with the man that Bishop defeated, Quinlan Mendez. Jason. Thanks, Ben. Quinlan, it was a tough match. What do you think happened out there tonight? Uh, he was just a bigger, stronger man this time. Um, I've had a lot of problems going on. There's really no excuse or anything like that, but uh, I, I just wasn't myself tonight. Um, my training schedule got blown off over a month ago and everything like that. And, you know, I, I was trying to prep myself for this match because I know Justin, he is a beast on the table. He's very strong. Let, two years ago, we went at it, and it was a, it was a war from hell. And, uh, you know, I, I just think he was the better competitor tonight. Well, I know you've been through a lot lately. We're all pulling for you, and you'll be back, and we can't wait. We'll be rooting for you. I, I promise you, this man right here will be back. All right, let's send it back up to the table. Guys. Thanks so much, Jason. We appreciate it. And Quinlan Mendez, gracious in defeat. Let's go to our table now. Matt Craig is going to go through some key things, key terms that you're going to want to look out for tonight. Matt. Okay, there are three key terms we're going to discuss tonight here as far as arm wrestling goes. Those are hook, top roll, and press. Now, the first is a hook. This is what Quinlan Mendez was attempting to do. In a hook, your attempt is to turn your wrist in, press into your opponent's arm, and roll them over into the pad. Everything comes down. A proper hook is going to look something like this. Hand bent over, driving your pinky down into your opponent's wrist. A top roll, also called going outside, you're going to start, you're going to pull your hand outside and try and pull their hand back. If you had a shirt pocket, you would try and put them into your opposite shirt pocket. Just like this. And then there is a press. Now with a press, the object is to get behind your hand when you have someone's hand without them pulling out and to literally press them with your shoulder down into the pad. And those are our three main terms here with WAL. If you have any questions, you can go to WALunderground.com. You can review the rules. You can review all of our main tips tonight. And they're all there, WALunderground.com. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. That's Matt Craig, our analyst here tonight. Great work by Matt. Great explanation. And a great crowd on hand here tonight. Colbert Rhodes, he's done it all in this sport. He's always cleared the bar. He's tasted a level of fame and notoriety that few have and few probably will. Here's a closer look earlier today of Colbert Rhodes. All right, here we have a true patriarch of our sport. One of the greatest pound for pound arm wrestlers that has ever lived, Mr. Cobra Rhodes. Now, tonight, Cobra, you are facing Max Talbot, a gentleman who's much younger than you, but very strong, very eager, has been training very hard for you. What is your plan against Max? My plan against Max is when the referee says go to pin him. I see, I see. And if you are to get into a war with your vast experience, do you picture having any trouble with Max whatsoever? Oh, I I mean, he's, he's a young, hungry lion, so I'm sure he's loaded for bear. I mean, if I can uh, find the match to be centered at any time and matriculate his arm, that's, that's what I will do. I'll, I'll out arm wrestle him. If he's too powerful for me, then, then I'll be crying in my milk. But that's not why I came here, to get handled by someone less than half my age. I came here to bang, so. No, I don't expect you came here to lose at all. And... A gentleman with your experience, um, have you had a history? I mean, I know you've had a history with guys with less experience, but have you had any trouble with any of these up-and-coming arm wrestlers before who come in, gym rats, muscle, trained to arm wrestle, but without as much experience as you have? Yeah, I've been held up by a lot of guys. I'm not as fast as I used to be back in the day, but I, I still feel that I have the capability to, to out-arm wrestle uh, my opponents, no matter. Oh, we all know you have the capability, that's for certain. Well, thanks, but I mean, no matter the strength, if I can catch a nice angle and, and out-arm wrestle him, 
you know, then a lesson can be taught. Wonderful, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andrew Cobra Rhodes. Yeah, and the crowd enjoying that. And Matt Craig, Matt, you're everywhere. Good work by you and talking to, to Cobra Rhodes. And let's talk about this match between Cobra Rhodes and Max Taubin. And let's talk first about Cobra Rhodes. Your thoughts on him entering this one. Cobra Rhodes is the patriarch of our sport. Mm -hmm. He has been arm wrestling for nearly four decades. He has arm wrestled the best in the world all over the world. Yeah. He is has arm wrestled people that outweigh him by 100 pounds plus. He has beat all of the best in his weight division. He is just an absolute legend. He has a massive hand that is going to give him an advantage right off the bat. He has a very unique pulling top roll style that's going to give him an advantage and just his insane experience and power. This man is ripped like an 18 year old at 53 years old. So that is just in itself an amazing feat. So a closer look here and take us through this here and what does he do so well? Probably everything, but is there one thing that he does better than anything else? Patience, experience, and hand control. He's extremely patient. If he gets into a bad position, he will never ever give up. All right, let's talk about the young man he'll be opposing. He's south of 30, still in his 20s, Max Taubin. What's the book on Max? Max is a powerhouse. He is an absolute gym rat. He loves to post pictures of his muscles on Facebook because he's got them. <laughs> he, his, his power lifting history is phenomenal. He's a phenomenal power lifter, absolutely insane power. That is going to be his biggest strength against Cobra Rhodes. If he can get in a good position and use that horsepower, he can beat the living legend. All right, let's take a closer look. We'll take a look at the tail of the tape in this one. And you see the particulars on these men, Cobra Rhodes and Max Taubin. Just about set to go, but before we do that, let's get to our public address announcer, Nick Hausman. This next match is a best of five lightweight battle. Coming to the table first, he is six feet tall, 183 pounds, and competes out of Boca Raton, Florida, by way of St. Petersburg, Russia. He took first place in the lightweight division at the Florida State Championships and is one of the young guns of arm wrestling. He is Max Too Strong Tobin! There's those muscles you were talking about. Gave a little flex for the crowd. Oh, the, the young man is absolutely ripped, insanely ripped. And the Florida crew he trains with, they train very hard and very long. And his opponent, competing out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. He is one of the most highly decorated and well-known arm wrestlers on the planet with national and international titles spanning three decades. He is six foot two, 168 pounds, Cobra Rhodes! And here comes the legend, Cobra Rhodes, wearing the black leather jacket, I love it. I like the look, love the look. One thing that's not often discussed with Cobra is his intelligence. This is one of the smartest men, most philosophical men you will ever speak to or talk to. Uh, he speaks multiple languages, insanely strong. I've seen this, I, I have seen this man's abs and he has an eight pack. He is <laughs> absolutely ripped. Well, he is a chef and a personal trainer. And this is going to be explosive and very fast. I'm not picturing a long war on this match. Best I could be wrong, but one way or another, I think this one's going to be over quick. I think we'll go to the straps, but after that, it's going to be over quick. So in our first match, every pull went to the straps between 
Justin Bishop, who won 3 0 over Quinlan Mendez. And our first foul is called. That one on Max Tobin, I believe. He called a foul there, right? Yeah, the, yeah. Call, the foul was on Max. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was a false start or if he didn't close his hand or rode up. Close your thumb. Stay right here. You're going to get another foul. Got the cover's way. Right there. Close your hand. Go. And into the straps we go. So four pulls so far and four sets, four times we've seen the straps be applied. I predict straps on every single match tonight. Really? Every one. Okay. I'll be surprised if we see a match in without straps. Does this favor either one of these men? Cobra Rhodes, by yeah. far. Cobra. Trailblazer in the sport is Cobra Rhodes. He's done it all, as Matt said so well. Grew up in Rhode Island. Cobra was winning world titles when Max was born. So this is, yeah. he was arm wrestling in the straps when Max was born. <laughs> but Max is very strong and very eager and he trains very hard. So this could go, this really could go either way. Be a huge win for Max Tobin if he's able to pull this off. And another foul called on Max Tobin. He's got the power to do it. But he definitely you got a crafty, has the power. crafty veteran across from him. Best of five. Yet to go here in our first pull. Two fouls on Tobin. And, and look at Max with the big drive. Oh my goodness, but Cobra is not pinned yet. He is not done. And Max Tobin with the win. Outstanding young man. You talked about that He has strength. just defeated a living legend. He has, he's up one nothing in the match. In the best of five, 90 seconds in between, and Justin Bishop helping in Tobin's corner as we look back at the first pull between these two. And Max with just an absolute vicious drive and top roll, he was able to take Cobra's hand, which is very, very difficult, and took Cobra straight to the pad. Very, very fast hit off the go. So Cobra getting tended to, and there's the Bama Bull. Off his win, our first of six matches here tonight. Helping out Max Taubin there. They are back to the table already Quick. and ready to go. The combatants These men are, are not wasting time. And I don't picture Cobra making a mistake on this match. He is a veteran and has been in this position many, many times. Yes, he has. And Max with the big drive again. And into the straps we go. For the fifth time. But Max is surprising me. Once again, he came straight out on Cobra's hand was taking him towards the pad when Cobra was able to slip. That slip saved Cobra that time. One nothing lead for Max Taubin. Trying to take a stranglehold on this best of five if he can win this second poll here. And if Max gets the win here, that's going to give him a big boost of confidence. No question. Here we oh, go. but look at Cobra with the dead stall. And look at the smile on Max. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. He's got him. Look at the confidence. Max Talbot coming through. Oh, my goodness. 2-0 lead for Tobin. There again, that power, that horsepower that he's got. The insane training that this young man has done. That was more than horsepower. That was a straight up, technical, beautiful match by Max Talbot. That went beyond horsepower. So both men to their corners as we look back here, Matt. Takes the hand, rolls right out through the... 
<laughs> I'd love to look on his face when Cobra went and had a big smile on his face there. And Cobra Rhodes Rolls now. right out through the fingers. Yep, a 2 nothing hole he's in now. What's he got to do to get one here, Matt? Uh, Cobra's going to have to dig very deep. Max is now very confident. He knows he can win. He's very strong, and look at him. He's already up at the table ready to go. Yep, he is. He feels great. His arm is not worn out at all, and I believe Cobra's is probably hurting right now. Do want to let you know that all of these matches tonight, they are all right-hand pulls. Yes, everything is right-hand. Yeah. We're doing no left-handed pulls. Yep, not at this event. Cobra Rhodes going back to the chalk. Chalks that right hand up. He's down in a 2-0 hole, a great and look there. And he can there. just hope right now that Max is unable to take his hand. That's going to be his best defense right now. Up, but Max is already working out on that hand, and into the straps we go. Yes, we do once again. Max has been able to do something very few people have done, and that's take Cobra Rose's hand. So Bart Woods got the strap on there. He'll tighten it up. And Max Taubin with a chance to deliver the knockout punch and win this best of five and three straight. Can Cobra Rhodes get on the board and make it 2-1? So no. That was a foul for back pressure. You are not allowed to back load in the WAL start. You must start neutral. Here we go. Up, Cobra kept his hand from being taken, and Cobra with the drive. He may come back and win this one. If he can bleed Max's hand, this may turn into something. Here comes Cobra Rhodes. Here comes the legend. But look at Max Talbot. Wow. Pulling out on the hand with a smile. And here comes Max. And here comes Cobra back. Cobra with the big drive. And now Tommen coming back, man. And we have a war here in match three. More of a war than I was expecting. Max still has hand control with the press and the win. Tommen takes it. 3-0, so the first two matches, Justin Bishop, a 3-0 whitewash of Quinlan Mendez, and here, Max Taubin, a 3-0 whitewash of Cobra Rhodes. As we look back. has just pulled off the nearly impossible. Most people thought that Max was not going to do this. Most people talking thought Cobra was just going to destroy Max, and Max has impressed the world. Excellent job. Let's get down to the pit. Our pit reporter, Jason Fisher, standing by with the winner, Max Tauman. Max, I spoke to you earlier. You said if you were going to be able to beat Cobra, this would be the biggest win of your career. Is this the biggest win of your career? How are you feeling right now? Uh, uh, Can you put this into words, even? It's crazy. I worked so hard for this. I prepared. I did everything. Um, Cobra's an idol of mine. It's so surreal. I had to watch the screen. I'm like, is that me pinning him or some other guy? <laughs> but uh, I love it. I'm feeling great. It's one of the best days of my life. It's amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. You look like you're having fun out there. Let's go back to the table. Thank you, Jason. Woo! The crowd loving that. You heard him. And he's in awe of what happened there and a great win. A huge win for Max Tom. And at our table now is Matt Craig with Tony Katowski to take a look back at this match and how it unfolded. Guys? Okay, guys. What an incredible match we just witnessed. Right off the start, Max was able to use his amazing side pressure, take Cobra's hand, and bring him right over. Very few people in this world can take Cobra's hand in that fashion. During the second match, Cobra was able to stop him for a moment, keep his hand. Max was able to use that horsepower workout and bring that hand right back open. Third match, Cobra had Max down. He had him down. Max was patient. He held tight. He, get, he didn't lose his head. 
He was able to get that, use his massive side pressure that he has trained so hard for, come back with that hand, take Cobra over, and do what many people thought he would never, ever be able to do. Excellent job, Max Talbot, excellent match. Thanks so much, Matt. And thanks to Tony Katowski as well for helping out. Let's get back down to pit level. Jason standing by with Cobra Rhodes. I'm here with Cobra. Cobra, a legend in the sport. What's it like going up against an up-and-comer like Max Tobin? Well, Max is one of the new young lions of the sport. You know, these guys, they, they were able to train, and they have discipline and the hunger that I once had. And uh, it, for me, it's just an honor to be on the card with these guys because uh, they're, they're the future of, of our game. Well, he says the same thing about you. It's an honor to be on the card with you. It looked like you almost had him there on the third pull in that third round, and then it went to the straps. Uh, I could go on and on about mistakes made, and I coulda, shoulda, woulda, but, you know, eh, I've handed out enough butt whooping, so <laughs> I can take a few as well. <laughs> well said. I have a feeling you're going to be handing out plenty more butt whoopings, too. It ain't over. It ain't over. It's not over. It's not over. That's right. It's not over. And tonight isn't over either. Let's head back over to Ben and Matt. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jason. And yes, indeed, Cobra Rhodes not done. You saw the entrance. Cobra coming out and Max Tobin in three pulls took down the legend. A huge win. Biggest win in the career for Max Tobin. He was in awe of what happened as he told Jason Fisher down in the pit there. And you look back at some of the key moments from that match and the straps utilized here all night. As Matt Craig had said, he felt every match and feels every match will be into the straps. A lot more to come. Tom Nelson and Ian Carnegie when we come back. Great to have you back here from Joe's Live in Rosemont, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. The first of six WAL events this season. And let's get down to Jason Fisher, who's standing by with Erica Bankston, who will compete in our fourth match of the night. Jason. Thanks, Ben. Erica, you've got a match coming up with Tamara Mitz. You've battled her before. What adjustments have you made into tonight's match? No adjustments adjustments, but um, I got a kid one year ago, so everything is different now. I'm a power mom, so uh, that's the big difference, I think, from last time. It's six years ago, so. Uh. Wow, amazing. Now, I've heard a lot about your pregame rituals that you do before a match. What are you about to do to go get psyched up for this match? Many people probably see me slap myself in the face, and it's not to intimidate anybody else or so. It's just to get myself focused and get the adrenaline rush, so. Uh, yeah, maybe you see that tonight. All right, well, I'll let you get to it. I don't want to stand between you and slapping yourself. All right, let's head back to the table for our next match. Thanks, Erica. Yeah, that makes two of us. Thanks, Jason. We appreciate it. Erica Bankston coming up in two matches. And Tom Nelson set to go here with Ian Carnegie. This should be a fun match indeed, Matt Craig. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. This is going to be, this could potentially be a war. Uh, but Tom Nelson has such an explosive hit that there's no telling exactly what could happen here. Ian Carnegie has been known to be explosive, but he can also be a bleeder. He does train with Devin Larratt, and he is an absolute monster. His horsepower is just insane. If he can stop Tom Nelson's hit, it's going to be a long day for Tom. Looking forward to that, and let's take a closer look and talk about Tom Nelson a little bit. What do you like about him? What do you feel may give him an edge to win this match here tonight. Tom Nelson, speed. His speed and explosive hit is just incredible. He has beaten some of the best in the world. He has beaten John Brzezink. He has beaten Marcio Barbosa. He has beaten Ron Bath. He has beaten some incredible names. When he, cut, when he steps up to the table, he's insanely emotional. He's a crazy guy anyway. Very fun to be around, very loud, very brash and he's going to come up very excited and trying to just take Ian's hand off. He says everybody is in his way. If Ian is able to stop him, once again, he can bring Tom back over. But Tom could end this in one second. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. That's why we watch and that's why we're here. Great to have you with us here tonight on BR Live. Our thanks to Turner as well and Turner Sports. And it is 
a great time for the WAL. And let's now go to our public address announcer, Nick Hausman, for the introductions. Let's get some beef up here with a heavyweight best of five battle. First, coming to the table, he is six foot one and weighs 369 pounds. He took second at the 2017 WAL Tenacious 12 and competes out of Montreal, Canada. At 369 pounds, he is both the irresistible force and the immovable object. He is the Grippler, Ian Carnegie! Now that, Matt Craig, is an introduction and a grand entrance from the Grippler, Ian Carnegie, out of Pembroke, Canada. And that Ben Holden is a very, <laughs> very large man. Yes, it is. 369 is what he weighs. Let's now meet our next competitor. He competes out of Orangevale, California. He's the holder of multiple national arm wrestling titles and is always a force to be reckoned with. He is Tom the Real Deal Nelson! <laughs> Nelson makes his entrance and looking forward to this. Nelson giving up a little more than 100 pounds. How much does that play a factor in this? It does play a factor as far as power goes. Once your elbow hits that pad, it's how much of that weight you can actually hold in your arm and take over. Okay. So it could play a, a factor just because of how strong Ian Carnegie is. Tom Nelson is an all around athlete. He is a former champion wrestler and has been training for many, many years. Never stops training. He has beaten some of the best in the world. He has lost to some of the best in the world. And his, he is making a move up from 225 pounds to heavyweight, yeah. super heavyweight. Yeah. So this could be very interesting. Like I said, Tom is very, very fast, very passionate. So best of five. And into a hook they go, and Ian has the advantage here. And to, Ian is going to hold and wear Tom down. Tom is not coming back from this. I will be very surprised if Tom pulls this off. Oh. That is tremendous heart. And he Ian Carnegie with the win. Yep, a one nothing lead for Carnegie. Tough spot for him to be in. And Carnegie gets it done in the first pull in this best of five. 90 seconds in between each pull, so they got a little time to gather themselves if they need it, Matt. Yeah, that wasn't a very long match, but that was enough to bleed Tom's arm a little bit, and I don't think it hurt the grippler at all. I think he's going to come in. If he can sink that hook again that fast, this is probably going to be 3-0. And, oh. and I'd, like to, I'd like to also point out I was wrong. We just had a match yes. out of the straps. Yeah, first one we of the night. We just went into a hook. We were six for six. Prior to that one. Six for six. Yeah. So three nothing for Justin Bishop over Quinlan Mendez. Three nothing, Max Taubin, biggest win in his career over the legend Andrew Cobra Rhodes. And this one is one nothing in favor of that man out of Montreal, Canada, Ian Carnegie. And now we'll just have to see if Tom Nelson makes that same mistake again. I think he's going to keep his head this time. Let's see what happens. What does he need to do to adjust to not make that mistake here, Matt? He needs to lot let Ian get in that hook. Okay. If Ian gets in a hook with him, they, there is nothing he can do. Ian Carnegie's horsepower is just leaps and bounds beyond many others. Tom is going to have to use his speed, stay outside, hit that top roll, and keep Ian out of that hook. Tom Nelson. One of the most underrated guys in the sport. Ian Carnegie has been an entertainer for a long time, but he's taken it more serious as of late. Chance to go up 2-0 here, Matt. Well, first they're going to have to get their webbings lined up. Yeah, that would help. Bart Wood handling that. Yeah, both of these men are very funny, very entertaining guys, but also very fierce competitors. 
So Bart Wood stops him there. And you can tell Ian already wants to go into that carve and carve into that hook. He wants to twist that wrist right into that hook on Tom already. The faster he can jump into that hook, the better. 30 seconds to and get And into gripped. the hook again, and wow. Ian, flash takedown. Huh. In a flash, no question about it, Matt. The grippler doing heavy damage there. 2-0, he leads it. 2-0, yeah, I think Tom is in desperate trouble on this one. Ian got right into that hook. He went right through, straight through Tom's arm. <laughs> no problem. There's the entertainer. <laughs> I love it. Very entertaining, guys. Yes. And a chance to end this in three against that man, Tom Nelson. And now Tom's going to have to come through with that speed. He's going to have to be faster than Ian. And from the looks of things right now, that's going to be very tough to do. Yeah. Nelson has beaten some of the top Russians in his career. Rob Vigent Jr. there giving him a little advice, helping him out. He's beaten Marcio Barbosa as well. But this a big mountain to climb here, Matt. And these two men showing the respect. There, I have never been in a sport with the camaraderie that arm wrestling has. Like These two men else. have very good mutual respect for each other. Yeah, it's throughout the sport. Here we go. And Tom goes into the hook with him again. He looked like he did that one on purpose. And Ian Carnegie with the win. So a 3-0 win for Ian Carnegie. The first two matches we had, we had all three of the poles go to straps in this and one. And once again, showing the respect. Not one goes, yeah, no. Respect indeed, not one goes to straps this time as Carnegie. No, both men appear to be content to go straight into the hook. Yep, and Carnegie a little dance. And he wins the match three to nothing. Takes the best of five and gets the job done in relatively quick fashion here tonight as you see Jason Fisher waiting to stand to Carnegie. And we look back and there's Carnegie finishing it off. Carnegie into that hook like a beast and just takes Tom right over. All right, he is standing by with Jason Fisher. Jason, it's all yours. The Grippler, man, you are an entertainer out here. You are. You've been on a roll lately. What does this win mean for your evolution as an elite arm wrestler? Well, let me just uh, say first thank you, Tom Nelson, for taking that match. He's a great competitor. There isn't really anybody in the sport he hasn't beaten. And really, I'm just an up and comer. But this is uh, probably my best win yeah, today. Yeah. Huge win. Amazing. What, what does it mean to have your son here in your corner pumping you up? What does that mean? Come up here. Come up here. What does that mean? Well, you know, I got about a six months or so. Uh, of uh, being able to beat him. <laughs> he's like the next world champion, and it's not even close. I love the kid, he's my, uh, he's my firstborn. I got three boys, hey boys. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, he's, uh, he's a stud in his own right, and he's gonna make a name for himself in the future. Amazing, all right, look out for the Carnegie boys. Congratulations, Ian. Let's head back up to the table. Over to the arm wrestling table for a recap with Matt Craig and Tony Katowski. Matt, it's all yours. Okay, what happened here is Ian went incredibly low, went insanely fast for such a big man, locked Tom into that hook, drove straight through his arm and took him straight to the pad. Once, Tom got, once Ian got Tom locked in here, he was right where he wanted to be. Ian was right in his power and there was nothing Tom could do. Tom couldn't pull out, Tom couldn't do anything. What Tom wanted to do was top roll right out through Ian's hand, but Ian was so fast, so incredibly fast for such a big man, he did not let it happen. He got right what he wanted and he dominated. And it's pretty much just that simple. Excellent job, Ian Carnegie. All right, guys, we appreciate it. Matt Craig and Tony Katowski showing what happened and how it unfolded for Ian Carnegie. There's Erica Bankston. She told Jason Fisher a few minutes ago she does slap herself around a little bit to get ready for the match. Erica Bankston and 
Tamara Mitz. They're coming up next. We'll go to the women's side here in the WAL. It's Chicago 401, our first of six events this year. Great to have you with us here tonight on BR Live from Rosemont, Illinois. And we welcome you back as we look back at some of the highlights from the matches so far. Justin Bishop, a 3-0 win over Quinlan Mendez. Max Tobin, a 3-0 win over Cobra Rhodes. A huge win for Tobin as he defeats the legend himself, Andrew Cobra Rhodes. You get a look at the pins, the finish, and Cobra, yeah, paying homage. He's a respectful man. And then Ian Carnegie takes down Tom Nelson, 3-0. The first six pulls went to straps. That match there with Carnegie and Nelson, not one of them went to straps. And it was a very quick, quick three pulls for Carnegie as he wins it 3 0. Let's get over to the table now. Matt Craig standing by with Tony Katowski. Matt. Okay, guys, welcome back. As you've all seen, these are five round matches, which means that a person has to win three times in order to take the match, and all have gone 3 0. Oh. Now, on the start, once again, you line your hands up. The ref will line your webbings up. They'll tell you close your thumbs, close your hands, and then it's go. Now, elbow does have to stay on the pa pad, cannot jump. Opposing hand has to stay on this peg, cannot jump. If you, get, if you foul, the match does not stop. If Tony fouls, now I have to win this match in order to force a restart. If I win, we restart. If I lose, match is over. Tony's a winner. So, if we, if two competitors slip, if if you cannot get your webbings lined up, say Tony wants to keep fighting and get low on my hand, low on my hand, we cannot get set up. Bart, after 30 seconds, will automatically put us into a strap to start the match. That has not happened yet, but that's what will happen. If we start pulling, as you've seen many times, and we slip, we go immediately into a strap. If I were to slip, say Tony takes me down, and I were to pull my hand out in a losing position, that is a foul on me, then we go into the strap. All right. Looking forward to some great matches. We still have wonderful matches coming up. Let's get back to it. All right, Matt, thanks. And thanks to Tony Katowski as well. Great demonstration of the rules as we're now into our fourth match. Earlier today, Matt Craig had a chance to catch up with Tamara Mitz. Okay, we have one of the two matriarchs of our sport, the crazy Canuck, the wonderful, beautiful Miss Tamara Mitz. Now tonight you are facing a lady in Erica Bingstrun who you have had two absolute wars with, come out even on super matches. What is your plan for tonight? To hit it hard, to use the power that I've been training, been training a little bit differently than when the way I was training years ago when we hit each other last time. So we'll see how much my training's been upping my game per se. Now, she is from Sweden, which is a true center of ladies arm wrestling. There are some incredible lady arm wrestlers out there. You have been obviously training for many years. You um, have quite a bit of experience. Um, do you think your experience over her will be um, an advantage to you? I think so. Um, I'm pretty well-rounded when it comes to arm wrestling. I, I don't just do one move on the table. I'm, I, I train defensive. I train offensive. I know how to manipulate my arm. My arm goes in the losing position. That doesn't mean it's over. It ain't over until it's over. That arm can come back and it can go any, any which way. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the start is. The finish can always be different. And now both of you are extremely passionate on the table, you and Erica both. Um, can we accept, expect a lot of that same emotion and fire out of both of you this evening? Oh, absolutely. I, I hope she is on fire like she always is. Every time I watch a video of her, she's, she gets me revved up, and I just want to jump on that table through that video screen and get on that table with her. I think uh, I honestly think our match is going to be match of the, of the evening. We're, we bring so much energy to that table, 
um, and we give so much energy to people watching us, it's it's hard not to. Like we we both genuinely love being at that table. Uh, beyond all shadow of a doubt, this is going to be a main event match. It's the match I'm looking forward to more than any other. The beautiful, wonderful Miss Tamara Mitz, matriarch of, matriarch of arm wrestling. Very glad to have you. Thank you. All right, so Matt Craig earlier today, fans on hand here enjoying what they're seeing here at Joe's Live. And look who we found, Matt. We got the young man. He's flexing. He's proud. He's happy. Max, how did that feel, man, to get that win here tonight against Cobra Rhodes? Uh, it's a great day. It's a great night. One of the best nights of my life. I'm just feeling on top of the world. I love the spotlight. I, I love WAL. It's a good day. It's a good day. How many texts have you got since? Uh, my phone is on. It's exploding. It's, 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 it's about to lose power. Too, <laughs> too many texts, too many congrats. But, yeah, I just worked so hard for this and just visualize the moment and to have it become reality is just like it's an indescribable feeling. It feels great. That's great. Well, congratulations. Since you're here, why don't we, the three of us, take a look at the next match, which features e Erica Bankston. And you got Tamara Mitz as well. We just heard from her with Matt Craig. And, I'll let you guys take this. Some highlights from the women's division over the last couple of years, guys. Yeah, this is a stack, stack division. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of wars. I feel like the women's division is, uh, you know, a lot closer battles up there than there. compared to the guys. That sometimes a lot of flashes, a lot of quick pins. A lot of the girls are very, very similar strengths. So it comes down to that technical position and them setting up the right way for the win. So a good look there and good explanation from the guys and looking forward to it. And let's talk a little bit in depth here, Matt, if we can, about Erica Bankston. What does she do so well? Absolutely everything. <laughs> Every, she is everything. There is no style she is uncomfortable with. She trains in Sweden where literally the has the best stable of female arm wrestlers in the world, oh, yeah. bar none. Mm -hmm. She's explosive power. She can handle herself in a war. She can handle herself in a hook, in a top roll, in a press, in a bad position. There is no giving up. There is no quit. This is what I absolutely love about ladies arm wrestling. Ladies never quit. And she they, gets fired up, man. Yeah, she yes, does. She does, she does not she does. come in light, light on the match. She gets not at hyped. all. Both I love of these that. ladies Sounds are like somebody else emotional. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that since stuff. we have the three-man booth, Matt took Erica. So tell us about Tamara Metz and what, uh, what's the she, book on her? She's a veteran. Uh, I know she's been pulling a long time. I don't know how long, but she's experienced. She, you know, she won't... Uh, she won't fear the spotlight. She'll, you know, she'll adjust. And uh, I'm expecting a war. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm saying four or five rounds. I think this will be our first that goes really, past three. Yeah, really close up match matchup. I think that will be the first one. Great. So let's get our introductions now. And for that, we go to our public address announcer, Nick Hausman. Are you ready for a women's match? This is going to be a barn burner, a women's light middleweight best of five match. Coming to the table first, she is five foot four, 144 pounds, and competes out of Almholt, Sweden, one of the most competitive arm wrestling countries in the world. She is one of the most passionate and tenacious competitors around. She is Erica Bigstead. Yeah. So there and here comes Erica. Yes, there is Bankston and Matt. You touched on it. How good the female arm wrestlers are in Sweden. I mean, they're revered over there. The female arm oh, wrestlers, they are, aren't they? They are. And there are numerous videos on social media to back it up. They are insane. And her challenger hails from Wasaga Beach, Ontario, Canada. At five foot five, 150 pounds, she placed second at the WAL Midwest Classic. She is well known for her warrior spirit and never gives an inch at the table. She is the crazy Canuck, Tamara Mitz. Oh yeah. What a perfect name for arm wrestling. Yeah. The Mitz part, and she you said she, Max, she's been doing this a long yeah. time. She's one of the first to really show that women could do this. Yeah. So kind of like the, the guy you beat, Cobra Rhodes, a pioneer and a, a legend a in the veteran, sport. A legend, you know, 
it, it's a similar matchup where Tamara's got the experience and you know the veteran status, and you know Erica's just that young, fiery, hungry, wanting to prove herself, a young arm wrestler, and uh, expect this one to get fiery. You said Max four, four or five. What do you think, Matt? What's your prediction in this one? It's these two ladies have had two other super matches, six round super matches, and they have both finished three and three. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is a great matchup. Best of five so far. Justin Bishop won his match against Quinlan Mendez, 3 0. Max Tommen beat Cobra Rhodes, 3 0. Ian Carnegie defeated Tom Nelson, 3 0. And now Erica Bangston and Tamara Mitt set to go in the best of five. This is the match I've been looking forward to for a month and I cannot wait. Yeah, I'm expecting fireworks in this first round. Uh, I'm thinking it's gonna go to the straps, but we'll see, we'll see on the hit here. It's gonna tell a lot, it's gonna tell a lot of the story right here on the first hit. Bart Wood adjusting them before we get said hit. Oh, they're fighting for every inch up there. That, that millimeter grip adjustment can mean everything. I'll tell you what, if I let Cobra get a millimeter on me, <laughs> I'd be pinned. And into the straps we yeah. go. Look at the emotion on these ladies. Yeah. Yeah, this one's this one's gonna be fireworks. I'm seeing a war in this first round. I'm seeing an absolute war in this first round. Yep, I'm Bingston, excited. Very fast and powerful. Tamara Mitts, arm wrestling for 32 years. Wow. I've only been alive 29. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and looks absolutely yeah. amazing in yes. killer shape. Yep. And ready to go. No question about the it. The years have been very kind. Yeah. To I mean, Tamara I'm five years into the sport, and yeah. I heard your real prime and your peak is 10 years. Wow. So imagine how good I'm going to be. I'm not even in my prime yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love the confidence, man. Yeah. I love this. So this, this is my passion. I yep, love this. The straps are applied. It's a sport that's easy to be oh, passionate yeah. about. Erica's got the better setup here. She's she's further back in the hand. You see how she's against the, the back back part of Tamara's hand. That means she's going to have a lot of pressure in her fingers trying to open up her hand with back pressure and pronation. Either she's going to accomplish that and take hand control, or Tamara's going to force a hook. Let's see what happens here. Indeed. Yeah, I'm liking Erica's setup. Oh! With it's a Erica war. with the it's big hit, but Tamara with the stop and hand control. Wow. I knew it. I called and it. Into Absolute the war. war. Yep. Into the war we go. Erica's committed Erica, shoulder. She's yep. all the way committed. Erica's. A, she won't give up. Wow. Tamara's and holding these ladies in a bad are still spot. going, still going. She's got the pin. Win, Erica Bingston. Yep. Wow. Banks then a one nothing wow. lead in the best of five, and you guys said it. You expected a war, yeah. and that was that was quite a battle. And let me be clear here. Erica had the better side of the strap with the better setup. I think this second round might be a tale of two sides. Expect Tamara to make an adjustment here. All right. Let me look back there at the, the pin and the victory for Erica Bankston. To their corners. Yeah. And there's Talk Nicholas, of the strategy. Yeah, Nicholas Nonestad, her husband there in the mm -hmm. foreground, Glenn Bankston, who also competes, right, yeah. guys? He's a bad dude. He's a strong dude. Yep. And of course, we'll be seeing Nonestad this evening. Yes. Oh, I'm excited for that matchup. Pulling that, Rob that, Vigent. Besides, uh, you know, next seeing, match. Yeah, besides seeing my boy Justin Bishop's match, I actually am most excited for the RVJ versus Nonestad yeah. because they have such conflicting, contrasting yes. styles. Yes. I'm really interested to see where that match goes, how it goes and you know, what, what it's gonna look like when it goes down. Yeah, so let's take a peek here, guys, while both competitors are getting ready for the second pull and the particulars. Sapphire and the Crazy Canuck, good nicknames. Yeah. Excellent nicknames, and we were discussing the longevity of Tamara Mitts. Yeah. And combined with the longevity of Cobra Rhodes and many others, arm wrestling is a sport that you can do if you stay healthy for mm -hmm. many, many years and excel at. It's a great point, Matt. So both taking their time here, guys. Are you surprised by that or not? No, they, no, they, they after that. Yeah, they're both, yeah. now that they felt each other out, they know about where the match is gonna go. Okay. So you saw how evenly rounded they were in the first. They both know they're in for a war. Okay. 
And so they're trying to do everything wars. to conserve energy, set up perfect, because every inch and every ounce of energy is going to matter right here in these next few rounds. And with those wars, your forearm can get so full of blood that you cannot make a fist. You have to shake that out, get that arm up in oh, the yeah. air. Yeah, I, I'll be honest, both doing by the time I'm in the third round with Cobra, even though I was in <laughs> control, my arms started to really pump up. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't take too many more of those kind of those kind of rounds because, yeah, your hand gets okay, too full of blood and it's too right, hard to squeeze and get into your proper forward, position. Forward. Sorry. I'm glad I ended You're, that one. I'm, I did. I'm yeah. Go forward, <laughs> made quick work. <laughs> Close your thumb. Right okay. Close your Let's hand. see it. Go. Oh Hands yeah. Look much more. Yeah, yeah. Equal on the start. On I, I'm one. calling uh, Tamara in this round. She's got the better side of the strap. She's setting okay. up a little different. She kno now she knows what Erica's going for. And uh, into the pot. Yep, that settles it. The hair is going into the pot. Oh, oh, it's business time. Going up. Oh, oh, that's it like turning the hat time. backwards like right, right, Simone right. does it. <laughs> it's, oh, it's game the time, Lincoln baby. Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> it's about to get heated. Now watch for Tamara to do the same style. She's going to pull back Make into sure the fingers of Erica in the strap. Crowd into it here at Joe's Live here outside of Chicago in Rosemont, Illinois. One nothing lead here in this best of five for Erica Bankston yeah. on the right. Tamara's got the superior position here. I'm expecting her to actually either take hand control or have enough to dictate where this match goes just because of a superior setup. Are still fighting. They're not loading, but they are definitely fighting. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. Right there. Close her thumb. Yeah. Tamara's just trying to keep her hand here. Everything back and around into the fingers. Foul on Bankston, her first in the match. What'd she do there, guys? She looks like a little movement before the elbow. go. Yeah. yeah. It might be a little elbow lift, you know. It's common. You're jittery. You know, you want to go. You're ready to go. And you can pop off before the start. But once they cinch down that ready ready go, the elbow stays put. Now I'm expecting a massive hit from Erica to come up. Oh, another start. false start. Yep. Two fouls. Three Erica, fouls. Yeah. You you lose the pull. Be careful. That's that was, key. Yeah, that was me in the first round. I had two right, fouls. Right. I could have slipped up, lost that round, ruined the whole match. Went the other way for you, man. Yeah, well, good thing I busted <laughs> that hand. And there comes oh, a massive hit from Erica. Big hit. But the stop from the Canuck. Early and we're hit. we're in the same position we were Tamara's in before. Tamara's got some hand there. She, she's lost it a little bit, but look, she's got her shoulder with her arm. If she can yep. either regrip or just or just put her shoulder into a pressing motion, she could press her because Erica's extended right now. She cannot move anymore no, cannot because her wrist is back. too extended, but she's going for the finish. She's got everything in the finish. Oh my goodness. Stretch. This is it. She's all in. If Erica loses this, her arm will go backwards, but no. Wow. She's got the horsepower to finish. Erica with the win. Impressive. Wow. Two nothing lead. She's one away from victory. Here in this best of five. Hey, I've been in that spot, and that's one of the hardest spots in arm wrestling. One inch from the pad, you look like, oh, you should win, right? No. That's when your opponent has the most pressure holding you back, yes. and you're having to scrape out every millimeter, every percent of power you got for those last inch or two to pin your opponent. It's good stuff. And so, patience. Be between rounds, 90 seconds. You see the clock there on the scorebook. Go ahead, Matt. Patience. When, did, when Erica had Tamara down there, it is so easy to want to ratchet, to want to yank, to want to jerk, to want to move position. She held her patience, held her right where she was, held strong, and bled Tamara out mm -hmm. and took her down. And she had a big hit. Big hit that, right off the start. That right speed start, got her in the position she was that in. That will make a big difference. You know, I've learned to hit for position rather than for the pad. Yeah. Because all you want to do is just put yourself in your power. Put yourself in a spot in the table you can access your power rather than just trying to end the match with a quick flash pin. You put yourself out of position very easy just going for the pin. Okay. Justin Bishop helping. Yeah, Justin, my roommate. You know, it's funny, we, we were talking today. So we're under 20, down to 15 now left between they've got it, the time they've got to get to the table. But you I can see saying, Justin working the blood yeah, out of that, that arm. I was saying Justin Bishop's my roommate, and we were literally talking today. I'm like, I'm like, how perfect of a night would it be if we just both won 3-0? And we were laughing about it like, ha-ha, you know, that would be a perfect night. And guess what? We both won 3-0. 
<laughs> and here we go. <laughs> so Bishop worked that arm out. And now we're set to go. Erica Bengston with a 2-0 lead. You need to get to three in this best of five here in this Now Tamara needs to match. stop that massive hit. Yeah. She needs to be able to slip into that hook quick, stop that massive hit. Stay right there. Now they've got 30 seconds to get the grip. Bring that down a little bit. Close your hands. Go! Oh, yeah. Not surprised. None Jake, of us no, are. That's yeah. not a surprise. No. That was going. You can see Erica that, using, that was destined. using a little yeah. extra hype up technique. Just you'll slap yourself in the face a couple times before a match. I've used it before. I like it. <laughs> I respect it. You want to be fired up. Is that a Scandinavian thing or it's just the way European she is? Thing. is no, it? You know, a lot of those European girls get fired up. Like, you, you know, you don't, you ain't seen crazy until you've seen these European girls. We need to go over to Sweden and yeah. do one of these events then. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure the Swedish boss will girls. love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back to it, Erica Bankston, guys, can win this best of five if she can win this pull. Who do you guys like here? I want Tamara. I'm looking for a match that turns into a five-round war. We haven't seen it yet. We I have. want to see Matt? Tamara, but I'm looking at that face on Erica, and she, she looks confident it. and ready she to win. She wants it. She's got a good setup. Okay. And there's the big hit Same again. Same spot. Same spot. Erica in hand control. Using now she's on the side pressure. Now she's really putting the side pressure down, trying for the finish. Tamara trying to stay Tamara with it. Tamara throwing it back, trying to get back, get her hand back. Oh, but, but here comes but she's Erica. she's in a bad spot, she's and Erica's just putting out. the pressure down. And there's the and win there for Erica Bingston. Wow, another 3-0. Three three wow. And that completes nice the trilogy. Job, Erica Bingston yeah. has taken down Tamara no Mix, taken down the legend of the of wow. sport. Wow, she is fired up. The flex. Good for her. And yeah, and a hug from yeah. husband Glenn. H hug from her husband. Hey, she's feeling great. great. And her husband is no slouch yeah. in arm wrestling either. I know he has an upcoming match with Justin Bishop. She flew here, I think, 11 hours, they told me, the flight. Something plus like the that. hour or two to get to the airport. Here's the final seconds of that third pull. See that patience, that slow grind for Erica. She had her right where she wanted her. She didn't get impatient, and she took her over. Jason Fisher down in the pit is standing by with Erica Bankston. Erica, super mama, you did it. That Amazing. Money. We're money. We're what money. is it like going up against someone like We're Tamara, money. who I'm, you've been I'm, against I'm many times in. before, like who has such a similar style as you? Does that make it more challenging of a match? Uh, no, I don't think so. The most challenging with this is a different grip and startup than it is in Sweden and in Europe. So mm. I felt that I had a hard time with that, but uh, otherwise it uh, felt pretty good. It did feel pretty good. How are you feeling right now with that victory? I'm tired, but uh, glad to go home with some money. <laughs> okay, all right. Congratulations, congratulations. Let's send it back up to the guys at the table. All right, thanks so much, Jason, with the victorious Erica Bankston takes it 3 nothing in the best of five. Let's get over to the table. Matt Craig, Tony Katowski to show us how this one worked out. Guys. Okay, what a war between these ladies. This was everything we expected and more. Erica did absolutely outstanding. She was able to get high up on Tamara's hand, come through with a massive hit, and then hold patient, hold patient. But even though Tamara had her hand back where she wanted, had her hand back, was holding strong, just held patient, held patient, and came through with the win on all three matches. The massive hit got her to where she wanted, and then she was able to just hold patient. Hold, work that arm, hold patient, and come through with the outstanding pen. Excellent job, Erickson, Erica Bingston. Excellent job. Indeed, thanks guys. Thanks Matt and Tony Katowski for the demo there at the table up here on our stage. And we're looking forward to the next one, our fifth match of the night here at Chicago. And you look back at the pin from Bankston, Rob Vigent Jr. and Nicholas Nanestad coming up when we come back from Chicago. And we welcome you back here to Joe's Live in Rosemont, Illinois. It's WAL Chicago 401, our first of six events this year in the 2018 season. Let's get down to Jason Fisher, who's standing by with Tamara Mitz. Thanks, Ben. Tamara, that was a hard-fought match. What do you think the difference was that put Erica over the top? 
Well, I knew she was going to have the speed, which I have some speed, but nothing like her. Arm for arm, I think we are right there. She just, her hand just overpowered me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you'll be back. You're a legend in the sport. Thank you for spending some time with us. We can't wait to see you pull again. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And now I'm also here with Nick Zinna. Nick, come on over. Nick, you're going to be pulling the main event here tonight in a couple pulls. How you feeling pregame? What's going through your mind right now? Uh, just trying to relax and uh, stay ready for the moment, you know, try not to waste any energy. Are you ever not relaxed? I've been hanging out with you. You're a pretty even keel guy. It's hard to uh, get motivated. I got to save it up because I don't have a lot of it. You know? All right. Well, I'm, uh, you're going to find it. I'm looking forward to see that motivation. Good luck out there. I'll need it. <laughs> okay. All right. Good luck. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks so much, Jason. And the man that Nick Zinna will go against in that big match, that heavyweight match, Michael Todd. Earlier today, he had a chance to visit with our Matt Craig. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have Monster Michael Todd. Now, you have a super match this evening with Nick Zena. He's a very explosive arm wrestler. You're a defensive arm wrestler. What is your plan for coming, for coming out on top in this match? Well, Nick is a very strong arm wrestler. He's got a super strong hand. Uh, my, my objective tonight is the same as in, any match. When they say go, I need to stop him from pinning me. So I need to make a war out of this match. I'm known for, uh, for long matches. I'm known for, long, for endurance. And, uh, you know, if I can stop the match, make him work, especially over a best out of five format, I, I think I've got really good chances of winning. So you think your endurance can win out in the end? Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's my endurance and it's my heart, dude. I tell people all the time, my sheer disgust for losing will outweigh my opponent's desire to win almost every time. And as we know, you're always a very emotional arm wrestler when you come to the table, um, carry your emotions on your sleeve, very outward, very loud. Can we expect to see a lot of that this evening? Oh, absolutely. I'm just going to be Monster Michael Todd. It's just me every time. There's no faking it. If I'm going to feel something, you're going to know it. You know, if I win, you're going to see a good celebration. If I lose, you know, I might shed a tear or two, but we're going to see what happens. I'm looking forward to a nice match. And we can't wait to see it either. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Monster Michael Todd pulling Nick Zena this evening. And it's going to be an awesome match. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, and it's coming up. Our sixth match of the night. Crowd enjoying that, certainly. And welcome you back up to our broadcast position. Max Taubin, who won his match against Cobra Road tonight. Matt Craig, of course. On the broadcast with me tonight, my name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us here on BR Live. Guys, next one coming up. This one should be fun. Rob Vigent Jr., let's start with him and talk about him a little bit against Nicholas Nanestad. What does Vigent do so well, Matt? Rob Vigent is an absolute powerhouse. He has a huge hand, he has huge biceps, and everything is horsepower with Rob. If he can get Nicholas into a hook, he can out horsepower him. He has the horsepower advantage. Nicholas, though, the more technical puller, the more leverage puller, the more he just wants positioning. All he cares about is ready, go. He's where he can win from. Rather than Rob, he just can be anywhere where he can have power. That's the difference. Nicholas can only really win from his spots. Rob can win in a lot of spots if he can access his power. If Nicholas takes away his hand, Nicholas is going to be in control. Let me ask you this real quick. One thing, his size, Nanestad, 6'6". Six, six, does, does that make a big difference when you're going against somebody or not? Huge, absolutely huge difference. That is one of Devin Larratt's advantages with his massively long forearm, one of Travis Bajan's advantages with a massively long forearm and long hand. If Nanestad can get on top of the hand, he can sit and bleed and bleed and bleed. And Nana stands a low hand top roller, meaning he, all he cares about is the bottom of his wrist being in the pinky and lower fingers of his opponent. That way he just turns and opens up their hand in order for him to just access his power and top roll. That's all that. he wants is that. All right, there's our tail of the tape, guys, and how it breaks down. And It's a great match on paper, very exciting contrasting styles we've got a power guy versus a leaner yeah. you know longer leverage guy it's a very interesting matchup i'm excited for this one yeah we're i like both these guys definitely very looking excited. forward to it no question and you're watching wal on br live tonight where you can stream games and events across the web and ios androids apps starting in july you can watch on apple tv roku fire tv android tv and believe it or not PlayStation 4, my, nice. my teenage son will love that. I gotta get one. What a great invention. I got the Xbox. Thrilled to have 
the WAL on BR Live here tonight, our first of six events. Down to Nick Hausman, our public address announcer for the introductions. Next up is a best of five match between two of the best middleweights in the world. First coming to the table, he's six foot two, 198 pounds, and competes out of Newburyport, Massachusetts. He won the WAL Northern Regionals and finished second at the WAL Championships. He is always a dangerous man at the tables who can dominate his opponents with his skill and power. He brings the biggest guns in the business. He is RVJ Rob Vigit Jr. Well, guys, the sun was out in Chicago today. How about those guns being out? Gun show, gun show, wow. baby. Wow. Yeah. I see them 20s, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Big time stuff. Those are the bicep peaks of a bodybuilder. This yeah. man trains insanely hard to get those arms, and they are very, very powerful. And his opponent is one of the most feared arm wrestlers, arm wrestlers in the WAL at six foot six. 196 pounds. He's a nightmare to deal with at the table, combining skill, strategy, and tenacity. Competing out of Helsingborg, Sweden, it's Ambush, Nicholas Nunnestad! Big fan of that walk-up song. Yeah. Hey. Well, Pantera. This is, uh, you know why this is a great matchup? Because. Rob's arguably, you know, top two in the United States, North yep. America, and Nonestad is top two or three in Europe. So you're looking at the cream of the crop, oh. one of the best elite guys under 200 from Europe, one of the best elite guys under 200 from North America. This is a great matchup. Yeah, and it's part of went into the new format this year, ranking style and part of the criteria was also the selection committee put together by the WAL. It's what the fans wanted. Yeah. This is an exciting one. Rob's getting geared up. All right, so before we get going, Matt, who do you like? Uh, I have to say I, I like Nadestad because it is very impossible. It is hard to arm wrestle somebody with only your fingertips. All right, so he steps out. Max, how about you? Uh, technically, it's Nadestad. I'm a I'm a RVJ fan. That's my boy. I'm going RVJ in a dog fight. Okay. It's going to be a war. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a war. Now Rob, it is. Rob's got enough hand if he can just get a little cup, a little bite into Nonestad's arm nice and make it about arm power, it's Rob's world. If Nonestad can keep it about hand strength and outside pulling, it's Nonestad's hey, game. Advantage to who here, Matt, with the straps? Either? Uh, with the straps, I'll, I honestly want to give that a little bit to Rob. It's, okay. it's harder to climb. Rob's hand in those straps. Um, but let's not forget, as powerful as Rob Vigent is, Nicholas Nonstead is not weak. He is skinny, he is tall, but he is a long way from weak. He's a very, very strong man. Nonestad's an example of tendon strength. Yeah. You don't need a lot of muscle to have strong tendons and ligaments. Rob's got the muscle, don't oh, yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, he's got muscle. But Nonestad's got the tendon. Let's see what's up right here. Rob's got a superior setup. He looks like he looks like he's got it. A look at the ground. Rob's in the zone. Vigent. He's ready to go. Vigent's in the zone. Vigent's got, Vigent's got his hands. Vigent's got his hands. Stop. Can he it. finish? Can he finish? Rob looks in control. Oh, Rob with the big, big pin. side pressure for oh, Rob. Oh, and he's fired Vigent, up. And he's fired up. That's my boy. He's yeah. fired up. I'm yeah. fired up. We all are. Yeah. This place is. Nah, but don't count on a stat out. out. Oh no. Make an adjustment. Especially now switching sides, he will make an adjustment. He's very elite. He's had a lot of super matches, a lot of experience. Look for him to make an adjustment this round. And we look back. One thing that's been talked about is Rob Vigent's confidence. He is coming in very confident, as you can see right there. <laughs> as soon as he didn't lose his hand, came through with a massive side pressure hit and took the taller man down. Tom Nelson in his corner. It was yeah. two years ago out in Vegas when Nanastad, when Neil pick up and Brought a bunch of guys over, and he was one of them, and he won yeah. that year. Nonestad, yeah, he's the 2016 WL 195 left-hand champion. Yeah. Rob Vigit Jr., multiple second place places behind yeah. Todd Hutchings. So this is a very good matchup, and I'm excited to see what these next rounds hold. Oh, Rob's lead. playing up the crowd. Of course he is. Yeah. 
One nothing lead. Yeah, you, RV Jake chant. You guys said you expected Nanastad to make the necessary adjustments he here. He will. What is it, what, what, what does he have to do exactly? What is it? I think he's going to set up a lot more back and up into Rob's hand. He was too far forward. He let Rob get too much of his hand around his and got Rob got his cup and got in control. See, now not They both stands. just did a major call. Oh! <laughs> oh, Rob's fired up. Emotion. Yeah. Going and Rob through the fired. table. Not only looks fired like up, he's confident right now. Yeah, Rob looks like the stronger, higher horsepower puller right now. Now, I would just want to say, I mean, you guys know these guys better than I do. I've been around the league for three years now, and that's normal for him. That, this oh, yeah. is Rob Vigent. Yeah. This is normal Rob when Vigent, he's competing. We were talking before the match. I said, Rob, you can get hype. He goes, after that first match, I'll get hype. And I'm like, all right, all right. And that's exactly what he did. He got that first <laughs> win, and he's lit. He's ready now. See the blood oh, there? see the blood, yeah. Yeah, this yeah is, we... There's definitely some bleeding going on. A lot, what was talked about was Rob's confidence beforehand. And Rob is coming in extremely confident. That was the question, was whether he could come in confident. He obviously is. He's fired up. He's ready to go. Let's see if Nonstead can rebound here. Pay attention to Nonestad's setup, though. Look, he's further back. He's lower on Rob's hand. He's trying to bend that back pinky out right now. He's and all the pressure the in the Nonstead back again. pinky of Rob. It's, it's a, a war, but Rob's curling him in. But Rob got him in the hook. Rob's curling him in. Oh, and over. Rob with the horsepower. He feels it. Oh. He feels it. And it's, Rob knows and it's over. When Rob wow. Bidget. Rob Bidget Jr. with the horsepower all day. Man alive. Wow. That was impressive, boys. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, would have thought Nonestad would have this one. He's just a very technical guy, hard to pull, hard to get comfortable with. But Rob's just showing power. And when you got that power, that technique goes out the window when you oh. can just overpower your opponent. <laughs> I, I love when you guys, when you do that, when you know you have him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just that look, and you know you got him. The best thing in the world is looking across that table and telling your opponent, nope. It's over. No. My time. Yep. Cleaning My the, day. Cleaning the blood up Let's there. Let's go. And we're looking at Vigent's corner here. Now, Tom, ne I'd like to point out, Tom Nelson yeah. is in Rob Vigent's corner. Tom Nelson lives over 3,000 miles away from Rob Vigent. This shows the camaraderie yeah. we have in arm wrestling. We have an arm wrestler from Sacramento in the corner of an arm wrestler from Massachusetts. Yeah. It's a big family. It's a big it family is. sport. This is a family. Arm wrestlers are a family. We, you know, we all love each other. We're all very close. And even when you get matched up like me and Cobra, like, you know, we love each other. We've hung out so many tournaments. And, yeah. you know, it's hard to have those fired up bad feelings like I want to crush this guy because right. you like him you know you want him to be successful and you be successful but when it comes down to that table you know you want to win there's an unwritten rule you win yeah you I win. Mean, look let's be honest there's a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar purse oh yeah at the end of this road in Atlanta yeah in early September so yeah I'll get you motivated Heck yeah, get well, you motivated. money usually motivates anyone yeah and putting on a show you know so now we get back to this is there just about set and Rob, Rob can win it here. Confident. Here we go. He is Rob's ready. Confident. He's fired up, ready to go. 2-0. He's shown more power. I'm looking to see if Nonestad can really figure out a, a, maybe just an adjustment here, some way to make the match go in his side of the table. Because it's been Rob's side every time. Yeah. You notice Rob's he wants to climb on the first right move, now. Rob's pulled him to his side. Mm -hmm. And that's been the difference. Nonestad wants to climb right through Bart's fingers right now, you can tell. Oh, oh, what are they going to call it? Is it a slip? Oh, Vigil wanted the win. He is It was hungry. a foul on non, not yeah. a stead, I believe. His elbow came off yep. the back. Hey, what? what? They're no. calling the win? What are they calling? He's saying, let's go. Let's no. go again. Yeah, Vigil's saying, let's go. He don't want no wins <laughs> Yeah, like I that. have to agree with Rob on that no one. That wins. wasn't, yeah. We yeah, don't, no, none of us we don't need to call you that. Want a pin. Yeah. You want to pin a man. Yeah. You want to look him in the eyes. Yep. You want to know you were better. Yes. That's what you want. Yeah. Yes. That's because that's the respect in the sport, yeah. you know? When you can look across that table and get that mutual respect back, like, all right, you were better today. Yep. That's all the sport's about. I'll get about. you next time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's all it's about. Yep. So 2 nothing. Rob Vigent Jr., if he wins the poll, he wins the match. Nicholas Nanestad has one foul, needs to win to stay alive, guys. And Nicholas is getting fired up here. He's not oh, yeah. giving up. He is yeah. not giving up by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, Rob's oh, in control. Rob. Oh, boy. And Rob's in yes. full control. Ooh. Wow. Rob, Rob Vigent. Vigent. 
just too strong. Just way too strong. I mean, my nickname's too strong, but <laughs> damn, that man is powerful. <laughs> he kept his hand tight, locked up, oh, not yeah, a stop, and took out. him over. Wow, wow, what an impressive show by Rob Vigent Jr. I, I'm really, I gotta say, I'm really surprised. Every single match has been 3-0. So far, we got one Every left. We got one, one left. Yes. Let's look back, guys. Take us okay. through what we're seeing here. Rob, he, he got the wrist. He just kept his hand. And if you can keep your hand, you can access 100% of your power. That's what he had every round. He kept his hand. His wrist was never compromised. All right, let's get down to Jason Fisher, standing by with Rob Vigent Jr. RVJ, man, this crowd is behind you. They're feeling it. I mean, can you even describe how you're feeling? You become possessed when you get up here on the table. Yeah, you know what? I was super nervous about Nicholas. He's super dangerous. We never pulled, but he's got so much world experience. <clears throat> I was really nervous about him. So getting a win on him just solidified my spot and where I'm going. It was amazing. And you've been many places before. I mean, you've been to the finals. You've had some epic matches. What is next for you here in the WAL? I'm running it. It's mine. It's over. Oh, you heard that. You heard that, guys. He says it's his. It's over. We'll see. Let's set it up to the table. RVJ, it's his night right now. Yes, it is. Sun's out. Well, it's not out anymore. It was earlier. The guns were definitely out from Rob Vigent Jr. Oh, yeah. as he takes it 3 nothing, guys. And an impressive victory here Rob in kept his Chicago. Hand and kept his head. And there is we go. Michael Todd, the monster, in our final match, our sixth and final match. He will go against Nick Zinna. This should be a lot of fun, guys. You're talking, you're talking the brute, you're talking brute raw strength with Nick Zinna. You're talking that farm. I can just pick up a lot of heavy thing strength versus Michael Todd. Very good. We're gonna take a timeout and we'll come back. Nick Zinna. And Michael Todd will go after Rob Vigent Jr. wins his match 3-0 here in Chicago. Joe's Live, our venue here, Rosemont, Illinois, for WAL Chicago 401. Let's go back over to Jason Fisher, who's standing by with Nicholas Nonestad. Thanks, I'm here with Nicholas. Nicholas, that was a hard fought battle. He left it all on the table. What was the difference for Rob here tonight? Uh, tonight, he was, the, he was the stronger man. What can I say? Yeah. How was your hand? I see you're, you're bleeding. What happened there? What, what initially caused this? Uh, I think it was from a slip out. Maybe his nail or something. I, it, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, it was a tough battle. We'll, we'll see you back out here at the WAL in the future. Let's go right to Matt up at the table. All right, guys, we're going to preview this upcoming match a little bit. Now, we're going to be battling two very, very different styles. Michael Todd loves to do what is called the king's move. Now, what happens there? He's going to drop down. He's going to put tons of pressure on that wrist and hand. And it's a de defensive move that cannot be blocked. That can makes it very difficult to pin because you have to literally drag that arm down and drag through an arm. It makes a pin very, very difficult. This is completely legal. He can drop completely down as long as his shoulder stays above that table. It is completely, completely legal and legitimate. What Nick Zena is going to try and do to counter is an absolutely explosive top roll hit and try and pin very quickly before Michael can get into his position. If Michael is able to get into his position, go ahead and get in there, Tony, and stop that pin from happening, he can hold right here and bleed and bleed for as long as he wants and then pronate through his wrist and bring people back over and back over and bleed and bleed until he gets them. If Michael Todd gets into the position, this could be a very long day for Nick Zena. Nick Zena has the speed and horsepower to absolutely slam Michael Todd. And we may also look for Nick Zena to press if he gets into a bad position. And that has been exposed as a weakness before as well for Michael Todd. So this is going to be a great match either way. It could be explosive and over very quickly. 
or we could have the longest war of the night. We're going to see. It's going to be awesome either way. Thanks, Tony, and great demonstration there is just about set for our final match here in WAL Chicago 401, the tail of the tape between Michael, Todd, and Nick Zinna. This one, two heavyweights. This is going to be a lot of fun. These two guys going head to head and battling. 300 pounds for Zinna and close to 300 for Michael Todd as well. So the sixth and final match just moments away as the guys get set. Matt gets back into his spot and in position. And guys, let's talk about this one. This is the last match for a reason. I mean, the, the fifth match was, was very good. All the matches have been interesting in their own certain way. But Matt, what are you expecting in this one? I am expecting Michael Todd to get right into his king's move, which he is exceptionally good at. <laughs> has been doing for a very, very long time. It's a very unorthodox style that, and it's an absolute nightmare to arm wrestle against. If he is able to get into that as quickly as he normally does, it's gonna be a very long night for Nick Zena. What are but, your thoughts? But Nick knows, knows where Todd wants to go. Okay. So Nick's whole thing is gonna be, he wants to be behind his arm, he wants to keep his hand, and he just wants to climb. And if he can make a couple adjustments and get high enough on Michael Todd's arm, he can bring his power to finish the match. It's gonna be a tale of the hands. It's All gonna right. be a tale of the hands. These guys are the experts, and let's now get a closer look and meet Michael Todd at home. Your disgust for losing will outweigh my opponent's desire to win every time. That's it. I hate the way it feels to lose, so I just choose not to. I am Monster Michael Todd from Hot Springs, Arkansas. 34-time national champion and 18-time world champion. As far as being a competitive person, I was a martial artist as a kid, had a black belt by the time I was 14, and I was competing in adult class and win winning. So if you don't like losing, you become pretty competitive. I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for my wife. We're actually together 24 seven. She's on me all the time to make sure that I come in at peak performance. Rebecca and I also run a transformation business. So not only is this our private gym that we train in, it's also our private gym where we train clients. My name is Rebecca Todd, better known as Mrs. Monster. And my main job is to make sure he gets all of his nutrition in. He has to eat every two hours, and most of those are on me. That's a lot of cooking. Taking care of the monster is a full-time job. After you're an arm wrestler and you become an arm wrestler, you feel everything that uses your hands and your wrists and your forearms. If I'm outside working on a tree, chainsawing, logging, riding a motorcycle, ATV, and I'm always going to find a way to use my hands and wrists and forearm because I'm always preparing for that next battle. Michael is a fierce competitor, and going into every single competition in these last six years that I've been with him, as soon as he steps up to that table, you can see the change happen. They say, ready, go and he's a totally different animal. He's the monster. The fuel for me to win this match is to be the WAO champion. I'm not here to be second. It's a bad man right there. Let's get to our public address announcer, Nick Hausman, oh, yeah. with the introductions. Five heavyweight Battle of the Titans. First to the table. He's six foot four and weighs in at 310 pounds. He competes out of Polo, Missouri <laughs> and is the current WAL Southern Regional Champion. The list of top ranked champions he has defeated reads like a who's who and he's here to tackle another one. The strongest farmer in America, Nick Zena! Polo, Missouri. Nick Zinna makes his way out.
national titles to his credit. He is the current WAL Super Heavyweight Champion. He is six foot three, weighs in at 285 pounds, competing out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. He is Monster Michael Todd! And here comes the monster. The pride of Hot Springs, Arkansas. I'm glad I'm sitting here. <laughs> uh, this is an exciting one. Yes, it we is. got two giants, both freaks, both huge, both have overwhelming power, but both have very different ways of putting it on that table. Yeah. Both are very gentle giants until they get to the table. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And these guys have had a few heated matchups, and they've all been wars. They've all been wars. Don't get it twisted. This is a good matchup. One thing we haven't talked about, Nick Zena is very accomplished in grip sports. Yes. He has crushed some of the toughest grippers in the world to crush. He has very, very uh -huh. strong hands. Beaten Dave straight. Chafee, Come Travis Bajan. You mentioned right John Brzezink. I mean, that's, okay, right that's a who's who. Close yeah. your hand. Yes, he has a Go. very. Oh, Nick Zena with the press. That might be a win. That, that was a, a pin. Win. That's a pin. Unbelievable, baby. Nick Zinna. And that's exactly wow. what I was talking about on the table with Tony. Unbelievable. What Nick wanted to do was power straight down through. He stayed with his arm. He stayed on top of Todd's hand. And then as soon as Todd turned, Nick pressed. Right there. Bam. Over. In a hurry. That's a win. And you want that to be in a hurry. The pad. Because Michael Todd can pull 20 rounds straight. You want to pin him. I don't him. doubt it. You want to pin him. Yeah. Wow, I'm yeah. impressed by Zinna's power. That's big time. Look for Todd to get fired up here. Having oh. personally practiced with Michael Todd, I can testify he can practice for hours and hours and hours. One nothing lead, Nick Zinna, best of five. Oh, Zinna knows. Oh, but Todd got the slip. Todd got what he wanted. So they'll strap him up Todd here. Todd These straps strap are going to favor. These, yeah, the straps are going to favor Michael Todd. Yes. Big time. Yes. Michael Todd knows exactly how to set up in the strap. It, it, I can't even describe to the viewers how difficult this man is to pull in the strap. I haven't done it, but when you're pinning guys like Devin Larat and Andre Pushkar in the straps, you're a bad dude. 1-0 <laughs> <Four off the stomach. laughs> lead, Nick Zinna. Need three to win the match. And don't forget Dave Chafee. I mean, Michael Todd oh. has literally beat, literally, every single best super heavyweight in the world. He has wins on him. And what a lot of non-arm wrestlers don't realize is just how difficult it is to pull off a successful King's move. The pronation power, the wrist power that you have to have to pull that off is very, it's very, very tough. This round is so important. It takes a Todd gasses out Zinna in this round. It could spell the whole rest of the match. Yeah. Zinna pins him. Oh, Zinna's got position. Zinna's got position, but can he finish? He rises, he regrips. There was the catch. He's looking for the press. He's, he's, he's almost got enough of Todd's hand, but he needs to be higher. He needs to be higher. He knows that. Now he's climbing the thumb. Now he's climbing the thumb. He needs to be higher, or Todd will wear him out. Yes, there it is. That's better. That's better. He needs to be higher on that thumb to finish. He's close. He's, he's up. So he's not close. high enough. Yeah, he's not quite he high so enough close. yet. And Michael just took his thumb back a little uh, bit. Oh, Zinna. that was close. That was an inch. Todd's getting control, though. Zinna's burning. Zinna's forearm is burning. Look for Todd to transition. Yep, there it is. There, Todd just took it back a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, Zinna's uh, burning. There we Zinna's go. burning. Yep. Todd's taking his hand. Oh, no. Michael Todd is oh, in his no. territory now. This is Todd's yeah, world. Yeah, looks like it. This is Todd's world. 1-1. One, one. One, wow. One. So one, this one. will be, guys, the first match. This now our sixth match that hasn't been a 3 nothing sweep. Wow. Yes, the first one of the night. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize is, well, like I was just saying, how difficult it is to pull that King's move off. You have to have incredible wrist power. You have to have incredible hand power. There are very few arm wrestlers that successfully have done it. Ron Kalimba, Jim Coyle, Crazy George, all have been arm wrestling for three decades or more. This is a very, very difficult thing to do. 
Cobra Rhodes there in the corner of Nick Zinna helping him out. Look at the uh, smile on Nick's yeah, face. Yeah. Well, he's, he knows. He's smiling, but inside he's hurting because I know that hand is so pumped right now, yeah. and he can barely look at him. He can barely stretch it back. Way too much blood in his hand. It's going to be interesting to see if Zinna can regain his composure and, and you know, turn this back into his match because right now it's in Todd's world and Todd's game. Yeah, yeah. Michael, Michael Todd is right where he wants to be. Look for Todd to make a statement this round. 18-time world champion is that man, Michael hey, Todd, 34-time national champion. In a 1-1 set here in a best of five. Here we go. Got 30 Close seconds to get the grip Close set. One of these men will be on top 2-1 at go. the completion of this pull. Uh, Michael was able to stop the hit stop. very well and into the straps. Michael was able to stop the initial hit very well by Nick Zena on that one. This is Todd smelling blood in the water. I mean, I, you know, I love Nick Zena, but this is, this is Todd smelling that blood, and he's about to go in for the kill right here. Smile on his face there. And palm to palm. Bart Wood gets him strapped up. I'll tighten it up here. And Nick is still one of the elites of this sport, like you said. We, do, we don't need to count him out yet. Right. But he is in very deep water against Michael Todd. Yeah. Because Todd's endurance is world, world class. I mean, he's got to have top three super heavyweight endurance in the world. So anytime it's past three rounds, it's going to favor Todd. Strap applied. Here we go, guys. Yeah, the third pull. Seconds away. There it is. Man, you're good at that. Okay. Close your thumbs. Take this out. Here we go. Close your hands. Todd's got a great go. setup. Oh, and there, yeah, there it is. Uh, Zinn trying is, to keep his hand, yeah, but yeah. oh no. No, Todd's Michael climbing. is right where he oh, wants Todd's to in be. Control. Wow. Zinn is trying. He's trying Michael to improve Todd his angle. Michael Todd can sit there all yeah. night. Todd knows it. Todd, yeah, Todd knows it. 2-1, Michael Todd leads it, can win it in the next pull, guys. Todd's in the fast lane right now. Yeah. You know, Rebecca's he, fired up for him on the yeah. sidelines. Monster, Two, no, Monster knows he has this one now. It might be cruise control for Monster right here. Yes. Because Mrs. Monster? <laughs> Mrs. Monster. <laughs> I yeah. like that. Zinna's hand That's is great. pumped up. He's worn out from that long, brutal war yeah, in that second round. The second round. one, yeah. That yes, yeah. really spent Zinna's power. Yeah. Let's look back, guys. And you can see it here, and it just doesn't have the side pressure or the hand to even. <laughs> and look at that <laughs> smile. <laughs> I mean, to be in that position is uh, talk about power and control. So the competitors have the 90 seconds between poles to get back to the table. Then you've got the 30 seconds to get a grip. So basically two minutes in between when you go if you take the amount of time. And these guys both yeah. need it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't go, make, make, make sure you understand this sport is sometimes as much endurance as it is power. Sure. It really, in these yeah. super matches, yeah. if you don't have the endurance, that third round, your arm could just get too worn out and your opponent could just sweep right through now. those last three. You gotta have the endurance to know right, you can up, go five or six up. wars to know that you're Close there your if it gets there. Here ready. we go, barring a miracle, this is Close probably going to go. be straps. Yeah. Oh, better, better. Ah, but Todd's hand is just. That's where you were going, right, yeah. Matt? Yeah. Into the straps. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. we yeah. knew this was yeah. going into the yeah. straps. Yep. Nick had hand control briefly, but Todd just rotates and rotates and rotates, and you're just so hard to hold on to him. See Nick shaking that right arm and hand, trying to. Oh, it's hurting. Yeah. I know he's hurting. Yeah, you can see he's it a warrior, face. though. Yeah, he is. He's going to give it everything here. He ain't going to go down easy. This is the last, his last chance, so ex expect him to go 110. Yep, he's got to win to keep this best of five alive, as Michael Todd can win it here in our sixth and final match of the evening here. Tonight from Joe's Live outside of Chicago in Rosemont, Illinois. One more. Okay. You feel that looseness right there? I'm just saying. I'm trying to get it. But it's just because you're toning us down and then I can move it. And here good we guys. go, final right. match. Yep.
Shut up Michael's way just a little bit right there. Possibly final round. Down to this. Yep. Oh, Michael Todd can right win it. Close yourself. Senna's setup is looking better. With a pin. Can he keep Close his hand? hand. Go. Uh, oh, uh, dead right center. Right in the deep water. Oh, oh yeah. Senna's hand is already, uh, it's already starting to open. He's fighting, he's, oh, he's giving it everything. Yeah, Mike. Todd's just in his world. Oh, he's, oh, he's starting to take the Michael hand. Michael Todd's right where he wants to yeah. be. Yeah, yes. yes. look for there a press by Todd to finish it. He's just standing there. <laughs> now, now he's about to come up and finish it. Oh, Zinna's got a lot of heart, though. Zinna look at that. Drive, look at that heart. Yeah. He ain't giving up. Michael's Too much where pride. he wants to be. Too much pride here. There it is, making a war. Make Todd earn it, Zinna. Come on, yeah. He's trying to. He's digging as deep as he can. Oh, uh, Michael, Michael Todd, Todd is press. your winner. In Michael Todd fashion, he drains and then he just right. eats you up. Bleeds <laughs> and bleeds and bleeds. That was fun to watch. Not so much for Nick Zinna, but <laughs> what a competitor he wow, is. Wow, Zinna's heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he smiles now. That's but what I love about this sport. You better put sport. some ice on that arm. Yeah, I love That's that. Gonna, that arm is going to be sore oh, tomorrow. it's going to be very sore. A 3-1 win, so. The first five matches, all three nothing wins. Michael Todd wins this one, guys, wow. as we look back in four. Wow. And the final pin there, Michael Todd takes down Nick Zinna, who is going to talk now with Jason Fisher down in the pit. Man, that was an all-out battle. That was a war. You took the first round, Nick. What was the turning point in the match? Uh, when he stopped me. <laughs> I knew I had to be quick, and I was just uh, glad I didn't get skunked, you know? I mean, you gave it your all. That was an incredible battle. Talk about what it's like to go up against a guy like Michael Todd. Um, it's kind of like uh, running a marathon with a guy that just stays right in front of you the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> never gives you a chance, you know, he just feels like, he let me get him on the start and then he just caught back up and then stayed right there next to me. Well, you did an amazing job, catch your breath. I, you're gonna be back here for a long time. Give it up for Nick Zinna, give it up. Yeah. Give it up for Michael Todd. He's yeah, and let's give it up for Michael Todd. Michael, talk about the respect that you have for Nick. I mean, I can tell the two of you guys, you are in an all out war here, but you guys truly respect and admire each other. Dude, I love that guy, right? So I hated doing that. I mean, you give me somebody I don't like, I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of that, right? But that, that sucked. I mean, I, I don't know, I, I love, that's a good dude right there. Now hang on a second though. There's a bonus for match of the night. Who do y'all think should get it? What? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, right. playing up to the crowd. I like it, I like it. And also, your wife, Rebecca, is here. I, what does she mean to you to have her here in your quarter cheering you on? I mean, I, I, you've mentioned it to me. Just, just tell everybody what it means to have her here. It means the world. She's my best friend. We spend every day together. Um, I am very blessed and fortunate to have this woman by my side, and that's one of the reasons I'm able to do this. That's amazing. How proud of you are of your husband? I can't even begin to talk. I mean... Everything inside me, I'm so proud of him. He tries so hard, he trained so hard, and he just, oh God, I, I, I can't go on. I mean. <laughs> it was amazing. Well, congratulations, congratulations to both of you. What an incredible match. Let's give it up one more time for Michael Todd, and an incredible night. Guys, let's go back to you. That was amazing. It was, Jason, thanks so much. And guys, we got about 30 seconds. Matt, we'll start with you with a thought as we want to remind you one more time tonight here on BR Live. It's been our pleasure to be on this fine, fine network and have them a part of WAL. Matt, about 10 seconds from you on a final thought and then from Max as well. Everything we expected, absolutely insane wars. The ladies gave us a wonderful, wonderful match and we ended it on a spectacular note. We have this young man here right beside yep. me, Matt Calvin, did an amazing job against a living legend. Good job, buddy. Awesome night, awesome place, awesome everything. He hasn't quit. He hasn't quit smiling, and I'm sure he won't. Max, uh, thanks for joining us. Congrats great, on your win, thank man. You, thank you. Great night. Great production. World Arm Wrestling League doing big things in this sport. Yes, Putting sir. Putting us in the spotlight. You know, giving us this huge exposure, and I'm um, blessed. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Very lucky. I love it. Great to have you with us. Our next event on BR Live, May 17th, WAL. 
Baltimore 402 with matches featuring Devin Larratt, Jerry Cataract, Matt Mask, Marcio Barboza. For all of our crew, my name is Ben Holden. Thanks for watching.